The sawmill trailer from Woodland Mills is finally here, and it was worth the wait. Before we take a closer look at the trailer, allow me to give you 30 seconds of background. Over a year ago, I purchased a portable sawmill from Woodland Mills, and I've been extremely happy with it. Which reminds me, if you'd like to see an in-depth review of the Woodland Mills HM126, the link is in the description below. Anyway, the only downside was that Woodland Mills didn't make trailers to go with their sawmills, at the time anyway. So I ended up asking Woodland Mills if they would let me know when or if they started making trailers, because I'd love to get my hands on one. As it turned out, they had already been hard at work developing a sawmill trailer and preparing it for production. Woodland Mills invited me to their HQ where I could see one of their prototype trailers for myself. After looking the trailer over, I was really impressed with its design, and so I ended up purchasing one of their prototypes. We loaded it onto the back of the pickup and headed for home. I couldn't believe that an entire 16-foot sawmill trailer was packed into such a small crate. All I can say is, whoever packed it did a good job. Woodland Mills told me that they will be offering 10-foot and 16-foot trailers to fit with the corresponding lengths of their sawmills. At this point, I should mention that this is not a sponsored video. I'm simply sharing what I know with whoever might be interested. The first and most important thing that I noticed about the trailer was its strength. Initially, I was concerned that since the trailer came in several shorter pieces, its overall strength might be compromised. But it quickly became apparent that Neil and Josh, the owners and engineers of Woodland Mills, put a lot of intelligent thought into the trailer's design. First of all, the rails of the sawmill track are built right into the trailer, as opposed to simply being bolted on top. This enables the track to reinforce the overall structural integrity of the trailer. In addition, you may have noticed that this trailer is constructed in such a way that the seams of the rails and side plates are staggered against each other, which does away with any potential weak points along the length of the trailer. You will likely be able to spot other features that help to further strengthen the trailer. For example, you may have already noted the bend in the side plate, the thickness and quality of materials used, and the cross beams to name a few. Bottom line is, the trailer is more than capable of holding any log that the cutting head is able to process.
Okay, let's see here. So here's the end. And here it is, the completed sawmill and trailer combo. It is also the very first unit purchased from Woodland Mills. Keep in mind, this is a prototype setup, which means that the production models are going to look slightly different. In case you were wondering, the production models will be ready for sale sometime this fall, 2017. If you have any question about their scheduling, pricing, specs, or whatever, I'll include a link to the Woodland Mills website in the description below. The trailer is designed to work with a 2017 sawmill or newer, depending on when you see this episode. However, with some modifications, an older cutting head can work just as well on the trailer. Case in point, my cutting head, shown here, is a 2016 model. Originally, when I assembled my sawmill on the ground, it took a good part of the day to level the track, largely because we had to set it up on very uneven ground. But it only took us 6 minutes to level the sawmill on the trailer. With my setup and takedown time reduced to mere minutes, my portable sawmill is now truly portable. I can take it wherever I go, which opens up a whole new world of possibilities. The sawmill trailer setup is a pleasure to use for several reasons. Number one, the 500 pound cutting head glides along the track with ease. The raised cutting height makes using the sawmill a lot easier on the back. And another benefit of the raised bed is that I probably won't have to dig it out of the snow like I had to do last year when it was on the ground. The only downside of the raised height of the sawmill is that it will be a little harder to get the heavier logs onto it. However, with a little bit of creativity, I think the problem can be easily overcome. It's a trade-off that I'm more than willing to accept to have a trailer that offers increased mobility, better ease of operation, and more efficient and accurate leveling. Currently, I'm using my sawmill to make some window and door frames for a log cabin that I'm building. The logs I'm using in this episode are small, but at some point in the near future, I will load heavier hardwood logs onto the trailer for processing. Stay tuned for that episode. But in the meantime, you might want to check out my log cabin on a budget series. You'll be able to find a link for that in the description below. Well, there you go. As always, I am thoroughly impressed with Woodland Mills products. Their sawmill trailers will be available for sale very soon. In fact, by the time you see this video, they might already be on the market. Anyway, that's it for now. If you like videos like this on sawmills, log cabins, survival or wild edibles, then feel free to subscribe. Thanks for watching.